Hey everybody, uh, this is the second part of Module 5, uh, Lesson 1, so modeling uh, with linear functions. Okay, this one's a little faster than the last one. Recall a linear equation in standard form is ax plus by equals c. a, b, and c are real numbers, and these both of them can't be zero. One of them can be zero, but not both of them. Uh, so, all right, so we're going to write an equation uh, that is linear, but not in standard form. Okay, well something like this okay x equals 17 y or y equals negative 3x plus 5 okay it's not in standard form where we have x the number x plus the number y equals some number right here okay we got x's and y's on both sides so there's a an example so if a equals 0 in the equation in standard form how does the graph look okay well if, uh, if a equals 0 then it would be 0x plus by equals c or just by equals c or y equals some number right here like this y equals 3 so when y equals any number, it gives us a horizontal graph right there. And similarly, what if b equals 0? Well, if b equals 0, we get x equals some number. And that's a vertical line over here. And this is not a function. Vertical lines are not functions. Okay, only uh, non-vertical lines are, are functions. But if, um, if b equals 0, then it gives us a vertical line right there. Okay, so determine whether 6x plus y equals 12 is linear. If so, graph the function. Yes. Uh, it's in standard form, ax plus by equals c, so a is 6, b is that 1 right there, and c is 12. So when we solve for y, we subtract 6x on both sides, and we can just make a quick table right here. I don't know if you can see, this is x and this is y right there. So we'll plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for this x right here. So when we do that, uh, we're going to get um, uh, those values right there. Okay, we get 24, 18, 12, 6, and 0. So we're going to graph negative 2, comma 24. So looks like this is going by every half of a every half of a tick mark is 1. So here's negative 2, and then when you're going up, looks like every little line is 5. So there's 5, 10, 15, 20. So 24 is going to be right there. Okay, negative 1, 18 is going to be, looks like, right about there. And 0, 12 is going to be right about there. So when we graph all of those, it gives us those guys right there. And then connect them up with the straight line right there. So that is a, a linear function right there, okay? All right, so a discrete function is a function whose graph is an unconnected point. So they're just points where the, the, there's no connection of a line. Continuous function is a function where a graph is an unbroken line or a curve curve or anything where it just is continuous it keeps going it doesn't just uh, separate by points so for example a function that representing the scale of individual apples is discrete I'm sorry the sale did I say scale the sale of individual apples is a discrete function because you're not going to sell part of an apple uh, it's not going to be represented in the table but however if you, uh, uh, a function that's representing the sale of apples by the pound uh, is a continuous function because any fractional part of a pound of apples is going to be represented in a graph okay so if it's if it's connected with a line or a curve it's continuous otherwise it's called a discrete function so graph each function and give its domain and range so Sal opens a new video store and pays the film studios two dollars for each DVD he buys from them the amount Sal pays each day is given by the function uh, f of x equals 2x. So the 2 is for the $2 for each DVD he buys from them, where x is the number of DVDs purchased. Okay, so over here we have, uh, here's x is 0 DVDs, here's 1 DVD, 2 DVDs, 3 and 4 and so on, and we get these. We just multiply them by 2. Okay, so we get those, and when we graph those guys, we're going to get uh, those points right there. All right, so this function is a discrete function because the number of DVDs must be a whole number. You're not going to buy a you know a piece of a DVD. You're only going to buy a whole number. So so you're not going to connect these guys. This is a discrete uh, graph right here. Okay, the domain is all your x values: zero, one, two, three, and four. Your range is all the y values: zero, two, four, six, and eight. Right there. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 Elisa rents a booth in her grandfather's mall to open an ice cream stand. She pays one dollar to her grandfather for each hour of operation. So the amount uh, Elisa pays each hour is given by 
f of x equals x, where x is the number of hours in her booth open, okay? So, uh, now can we have a fraction of an hour, or will she get charged for a fraction of an hour? I'm going to say yes on this. You can probably say no, but I think I'm going to say yes, okay? So, uh, so x hours is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so f of x is just x. So, whatever this is, that's what this is right here. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because y equals x. Remember, f of x equals x, okay? So we're going to get those points, and when we graph them right here, okay? Now, uh, we're going to connect them because we can do a half of an hour, and so a half of an hour would cost um, uh, 50 cents, don't you think? So, so this one's going to be a continuous function right here, okay? So this is a continuous function. The domain is uh, all the x's between zero and, uh, well, as long as she's going to stay in, uh, open. So all real numbers that are greater than zero. Okay, the range is also all real numbers greater than zero. Just depends on how, how long she keeps that open. So why are the points in the last example connected? All right, well, the points on the graph are connected because fractional parts of an hour are possible to get charged anyway. So, so this function is continuous. So how is the graph of a function, uh, the DVD store, related to the graph of an arithmetic sequence? Well, both graphs consist of uh, discrete points. So arithmetic sequences is just talking about the terms, the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. So, so Sal's uh, thing is also the first DVD, the second DVD, the third DVD. So both of those are they're dealing with whole numbers, so that gives us discrete points. And the difference between each pair of points is also constant. So that was another similarity between those two right there. All right, a few more questions. What is the solution of a, <laughs> of a linear equation and two variables? Okay, a solution of a linear equation and two variables is any ordered pair, p -p -pair uh, that makes the equation true. Let me fix that right there because I send these to other teachers, by the way, So uh, in my district. So what type of function? has a growth with a series of unconnected points right there. Okay, well that would be a discrete function right there. Okay, so that's what that says is it's a discrete function. Uh, has graphs with a series of unconnected points. All right, what is the standard form of a linear equation? You remember that from the last lesson? That is that ax plus by equals c. Remember, a and b both can't be zero. Okay, one of them could be zero, but not both of them can be zero. All right, if you guys are in my class, I'm going to assign you that for your homework assignment. Take care, you guys.